Président Lord, the Lord's name be praised. We come once again to continue our series on the theme supreme and final covenant in the blood. That's the final. That's the final. There's no other blood covenant that will supplant this one. You call to it or subvert it in any form, shape, throughout all eternity. It's not meant only for this very world, but also for the world to come. Our subtopic today will be the substance. We last, in our first session, dealt with how God cut a new black covenant with the Jews, the people of Israel, which he himself founded, formed, established, and gave them the name Israel. That means Prince of God. He gave to the third of the ancestry, which happened to be Jacob, the grandson of Father Abraham. Now, we're talking about the limited blessing that God gave to them, according to the Mosaic law under the Abrahamic covenant. And also the punishment, which was too so severe. And they were dispersed. He told them, Anyone who bless them shall be blessed, anyone who curse them shall be cursed. But he told them, When they will obey, they will be the head, not the tail. Above only, never beneath. They will learn to make nations and not borrow. Above all, they will be a peculiar people to him, a holy nation, a holy priesthood. And it was so. But the Abraham covenant was unconditional based upon God's own faithfulness and abilities. But the Mosaic law under the Abraham covenant was conditional. If they obey, he will bless them. If they disobey, he will, he will bring punishment for them. And the punishment even was more than the blessing that he listed in Deuteronomy 28. We've seen that God was in the business of saving the whole world. The race of Adam. Adam was the first man and only man. And out of us all came. Men of different color and men of different tongues and the likes. God divided them at the Tower of Babel. He broke the earth also into continents later. And so, the Bible says he wiped out the whole world in the days of Noah and was left with Noah and his seed, eight of them. So we all are seeds of Abraham through Noah, another tower of Babel, because we plan to do evil. God had to confuse our languages. So now we fight. We think we come from different blood. We are purer blood than others. No. Even the Jews that God chose, the Israelites, they are not of different blood from us. They were sinners. What God did was he wanted to save the whole world, but God starts everything of it small, but it will not always remain small. As his own word said, though your beginning is small, but your latter end shall greatly increase. And the Bible says, better is the end of a matter than its beginning. God starts with a seed, a seed that you may not even see, but inside the seed is reproductive power, because God is both life and resurrection. So he gives life to the dead and calls sin that be not as though they were. We saw the Lord Jesus Christ cutting a black covenant with his twelve apostles on the night that he was betrayed, which we normally call Monday, Thursday. And not only that, but they also became representative of the nation of Israel. And somebody will say it was just one, it was just bread. Other churches may say transubstantiation that when they bless the bread, it literally becomes the body of Christ, and the wine also literally becomes the blood of Jesus. That's not what we are going into now. That's what I cut it symbolically. There is a reason why, and the reason will be known today. Today we deal with the substance. Now, this is this thing just. Ended there on the Monday, Thursday. 
because it was a process. Because the disciples and others will not be able to. They will not be able to stand in their position like every one of us. He was doing it. Later on, we realized that he even went to finish it in the grave. Nobody will be there with him in hell. So there are certain things he said, which was a, a precursor to the substance, the actual thing that was to come. We'll consider a few more things today in dealing with the substance. Number one, we saw the fake conviction before Pilate judgment seat. I'm going to give you six of them. Fake conviction before Pilate judgment seat. That's the process. He entered. He knew this thing depended on him only. Not on his twelve apostles, not on the people of Israel, not on the governance and the emperor of Rome. It didn't depend on anybody, whether Caucasians or blacks or Asians or Native Americans. No, no human being. It also to tell you that it was unconditional like the Abrahamic covenant and even superior to it we will learn later on. Number two, there were the 39 lashes, gushing blood. That was customary. You are not king or beating 40. They knew what it was meant to, so they normally call it 40 minus 1, 39. So we look at it at Matthew 27, 26. Then he released Barabbas to them, that was Pontius Pilate. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. It wasn't with cane, it wasn't with bamboo sticks and the like. It was leather belt with hooks at the mouth, many hooks at the mouth. So when he slashed, then they, they withdraw their hands. It cuts through the flesh, it pulls away the flesh. The skin and pulls the flesh itself and draws blood because it was to be a black covenant. So that which he did on the Monday, Thursday night, he 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 literally, he literally, he literally went on to effect it for you to know. Then number three, there was a crown of thorns, gushing blood, the crown of thorns. We look at it at Mark. 15 verse 17. They put a purple robe on him, they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they push it. And he started bleeding in the forehead, the head, and everything. And the tongue of flesh stood for poverty. That we called curse in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible said the Garden of Eden was Garden of Pleasure. Pleasure. Eating means pleasure. Eating means delight. But there was no tonsil or tinsel. Tonsil tinsel are signs of curses. So God said from henceforth that you have disobeyed me. Tonsil tinsel will grow out of the land. Tonsil tinsel will not have grown out of any part of the land or the earth. So it's due for poverty. And it's due for pain. And that brought about we sweating out of the brow of our forehead in order to make ends meet. That's why people are running all over the world that we are hostless and that like and we are not able to make ends meet and it's the labor union or aristocrats. No, everybody is suffering because of their disobedience. And it brought blood. Listen, we are dealing with black government. And then we are dealing with the supreme and final covenant in the blood. Number four, there was the piercing of the hands and legs to the crowd, gushing blood. They used long inches of nails to put one leg upon the other. And then and then just nailing through the bones through the second leg to the back into the wood. You can imagine if a pin even pierces you, you know the pain and the blood that comes out. 
and not only that, with his hands stretched on the beam of the cross, he was near. It, it wasn't tight like other people were tied, like the two thieves by his right and left hands. He was pierced. It's all a matter of the black covenant being enacted. Literally. <laughs> Number five. They hit him on the head again and again. That's what the Bible says. Drawing blood. Blood oozing. And we see that in Mark 15. 19. Mark 15, 19 that again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. They did it as a mockery. That's what they did as a mockery. It was soldiers, rowdy and proud soldiers. And it is said, the Roman soldiers were the most brutal and violent and fiercest amongst every other soldiers we have known. That is why the image God showed to King Nebuchadnezzar, the iron, the iron part of that statue stood for the Roman Empire. They were brutal. They couldn't fleet all sort of heinous damages to you. Number six, there was a piercing of his side with a spear, drawing blood and water. The Bible said that the soldier who came to inquire whether Jesus had died because it was getting to the evening and the Sabbath was about to commence and with the bodies hanging on the cross, it would defy the Sabbath. So they went to ask for the body of Jesus. And when the pilot was wondering whether he has died, so they went to check. They saw the other thieves, and they had not died, so they broke their legs. And breaking their legs is to, it, 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 scientifically, is to help them to die quickly. Because if they still were standing on their feet, though they were hanging, there is a way you will be able to draw up and breathe in and prolong your death, your pain. But when the legs are broken, you, you, you can lift up yourself again. But when they check on the Lord Jesus, he had died. But they wanted to be sure. So one of the soldiers took a spear and pierced his side. He pierced his side. It's, all, it's not just for the forgiveness of our sins and the washing away of our sickness and infirmity, but it was all the oozing out of his blood, pure blood, to enact a blood covenant relationship between the nation of Israel and Yahweh God, Almighty God, the only true God, and also with us Gentiles. That's the new covenant. Jesus spilled his blood. It wasn't just symbolic. It was literal blood that he shed all when the blood was oozing from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. It was meant for God to enter into black covenant relation with the seed of Adam, which includes everyone, which includes you, so that we become black brothers with him. He is given an opportunity for us to be brought back from the kingdom of darkness from the suppression of the enemy, demons, wickedness and wicked men, from guilty conscience, as well as sickness and disease and pain and curses, and also to save them from the lake of fire and bring so, which will be the eternal destination of whosoever reject that which was enacted by the Yahweh Shaddai, Almighty God, through his son Jesus Christ, because of his love that he has for mankind, everyone, Male and female, as you look at me and as you listen to me, you are part of what was in the mind of God. God saw you from the beginning. He wanted to save you and he will save you right now. If you only accept his provision for your salvation, he is not depending on you to save yourself. He is not depending on you to bring your thanks. No one's thanks is acceptable to him except what he did. 
yours is an abomination even in his sight. Don't think you have to do good work before you'll be saved by God. Don't think you have to be you'll be righteous. You can't be righteous. The Bible says our righteousness even is as filthy rags, not only rags, but filthy rags before him. God has made a way of provision of black covenant. We are not just saved, but we are made into black brothers in relation with the source of life, the sovereign one, the one who is the immaculate one. That angels, the Bible tells us, fear even to look at him. So the angels who are closer to him are given six wings. The Bible described them. They used two in a pretty to fly and the two down to cover their legs and then the two up to cover their faces. He's holy and they cry holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Throughout eternity they are doing so and they do the piercing. What did we say? There was blood oozing all along. The fake conviction before Pilate judgment seat. Number two, the 39 lashing. Gushing blood. Number three, the crown of thorns. Gushing blood as well. Number four, the piercing of the hands and legs to the cross. Gushing blood. And five, hitting him on the head again and again. That could make you insane, mad. You will have brain damage. Yes, he had brain damage as well. And not only brain damage, but broken whatever it is. The head, the skull, so that blood will come up throughout that to establish the black covenant God wants to save us with and six the piercing of his side with a spear drawing blood and water let's look to the Lord in prayer say dear God dear God I never knew I never knew that this is the length you went that this is the length you went to save me to save me and not only save me and not only save me, but to draw me closer, but to draw me closer to you, to you as a blood brother, as a blood brother, so that everything that belongs to you, so that everything that belongs to you will belong to me, will belong to me, and everything that belongs to me, and everything that belongs to me, though it came from you first, though it came from you first, will belong to you, will belong to you once again, once again, and that you yourself will belong to me. And that you yourself will belong to me, and I also will belong to you. And that also will belong to you in the black covenant. In the black covenant that is stronger. That is stronger than any other contract. Than any other contract or agreement. All agreements that can be made. That can be made in heaven. In heaven. On earth. On earth. In this present life. In this present life. And the world to come. And the world to come. And thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for obeying, for obeying the commands of the Father, the commands of the Father, because of your love, because of your love, in sacrificing, in sacrificing your blood, your blood to the last breath, to the last breath. I will no more. I will no more. Look down, look down, and make light, and make light of the shed blood. Of this shed blood through your passion week, through your passion week, and many suffering, and many suffering, you are that took for me, you are that took for me. In Jesus, your name I pray. In Jesus, your name I pray. With thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. That is especially for you, the Christian, born again. Now you, who haven't known Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you run around other religions, and some of you say oh, you are free tickets. There's a blood that brings you nearer to truth. That brings you nearer to eternal life. And that opens the way to this truth and eternal life. Zoe, as Jesus said, I came to give you life. Zoe, no physical life, no human life, but all kind of life. And to make it more and more for you to give it to your part. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord I give you my life. I give you my life. I surrender. I surrender, I surrender to your sacrifice. To your sacrifice. And black covenant. And black, black covenant. Be my Lord. Be, be my Lord. And personal savior. And personal savior. Be my blood brother. Be my blood brother. And let me be. 
I like to be your blood brother. Your blood brother. In ten. Then in your name I pray. In your Amen. name I pray. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Now, as we go along, I will not be emphasized so much the things you can use the blood of Jesus to do. There are many. Because my intention and God's intention is that you have to have the basic knowledge that you are in court covenant relationship with him, but a covenant. There are many who apply the blood of Jesus without being conscious of the Father. Having given their life to Jesus, they become blood brothers. Now they have entered into a covenant with God and then a blood covenant in effect. Do you know? Do you know you are born again, but do you know you are a covenant person of God? And do you know as a church, local church, do you know that you are a blood covenant church to the Lord Jesus Christ. As we walk along, God does nothing except in blood covenant relationship. And as the Bible says, there's a friend that is closer than a brother. And we've, we've seen already, a blood covenant makes you closer than your natural father and mother's offspring, which happen to be your siblings. And makes you closer than to your father and to your mother as well, and make you closer than to your or own offspring, your children. Blood covenant. This black covenant is not with you, man. This black covenant is with the Almighty One. This black covenant is with the Maker of Heaven and Earth, Elohim, the Creator God. What a joy. What an opening. What grace. What mercy. He has brought on our way. Now, having given your life to Jesus Christ, you are in black covenant with God. Never forget it. You are not just a child of God. You are not just a forgiving sinner. No. You are a brand new person. And you are in black covenant relation. And as we learned in the other series that preceded this one, about chastening sent from abroad to look for the believing state. And his black covenant he cut with the African king. And the African king demanded the best thing just had, the white coat. And gave him the best thing he had, that royal staff, which was in the form of a javelin. Now, be assured, I want you, that God wants you to be black covenant, not just black covenant, but divine black that the covenant consciousness. That means you are not in blood covenant with ordinary people, but you are in blood covenant with the Almighty One. I'll introduce you for spiritual things you have to do, exercise you have to do daily. You must have a quiet time. The number one is Bible studies. Number two is prayer. Number three is church attendance. And number four is witness or soul winning. When we talk about Bible reading or study, you must give it first place in your life. When you wake up in the morning, that's the first thing. You go to your Bible, put your head, pour yourself in. The Bible is the word of God, is the mind of God. The Bible is God Himself. And the Bible rules out the life of God. It enters you as you feed. You are not just renewing your mind, but it's entering into your inner mind, your human spirit. Bible says, His word is light on your path and lamp on your feet. And the entrance of God's word brings understanding. And not only that, but it makes the most stupid person wise. Even if you are stupid, dumb, if you are the scum of the world, when the word of God, not that you learn it by root in your mind, it enters into your life. That's what I mean. The entrance of God's will will make you a wise person and will bring success and prosperity to your life in this life. And also, it will let you appear before the Father as a black covenant son in the next world to come. So, number two, you pray. You pray in the righteous name of Jesus. Don't pray in the righteous name. Don't pray in your own name. Don't use your abilities and your gifts and talent and achievement to go before God. You have failed even before. Remember Jesus' parable about the taxpayer as well as the Pharisee. 
The Pharisee was counting the good things and the religious deeds that he's done and other arms that he's given. The Pharisee went to whom to say, but the publican that has collected, who's considered a sinner, who's looked down and downtrodden in society, couldn't lift up his head even towards the heaven. He was beating his chest. He said, be merciful unto me, O sinner. The Bible said, went back justified. Prayer. God promised to answer prayer. And God promised to answer through the name of Jesus Christ. Go in Jesus' name. Whether you feel superiority, complex or inferiority, complex, you are discouraged. Go in Jesus' name. You think you are better than everybody, that you are holier than that. Go in Jesus' name. For God resists the prayer. And number three, attend Bible believing church. Finally, they don't go to a court in church and don't run, run other religions aside. And don't add to many gods. Don't add Christianity. Jesus to your many gods that you have. It is either Jesus or nothing. He says the way the truth and life. No one comes to the Father. Except by him. It's Jesus or nothing. It's not Jesus plus. Do you understand? You even can't take Jesus first and add to it. That's an abomination. That's idolatry. That's the dilemma of one thing God hates. He told Moses to give to the people. That's the first of the Ten Commandments. Now, number four. You tell others about the saving power of Jesus. His blood that he shed in covenant relationship with us human beings. Everyone, Tom, Dick and Harry, male and female, young and old, rich or poor, black, white, brown, red, yellow. These are the colors of the, of the soil God used to make Adam. So when he disperses, we, we, we were showing different colors of the, of the different color of sand or soil that he made us with. Do you understand? Who got you the next time? Now we are in the, we are dealing with the substance. Jesus really, literally, used his blood for the Father to cut the black of night with us. And that we will see is better than the old he cut with Israel. This one to be cut with Israel, but he opened the door for every other. He said, Whosoever will shake him. Shall we look to the Lord as a prayer? I pray that God will continually open your eyes. And I pray for you, Christian. And I pray for you, the church of Jesus Christ. You must be bold. You must be strong. You must know what Jesus did for you. He didn't just do anything uh, symbolically. He didn't just do anything that is allegory. He didn't just do anything that you think that is a fairy tale. He went through pain. He shed his blood. And his blood didn't come in one way. He came in different ways. He was whipped. He was scorched. He was done everything. He was pierced. He was crucified on the cross. He bled for you. And the bleeding was meant to establish a covenant relationship. I said, later we will talk about what the blood can be used. But the most important thing God wants us to be conscious that we are black covenant people of God. And we are black covenant relationship. And as we know, when we are black covenant of God, as he did for Israel, so he does for us, both you said that we are believe and the, uh, the church of Jesus Christ. He will fight for you, he will get to do. He will protect you, provide for you. And anyone who points a finger at you, he will point his finger at that person. The same blessing he gave to Abraham. Whoever will curse us as Christians, whoever will curse us as church of Jesus, he, he will curse them as well. Whoever blesses shall be blessed. He fought. He fought for Israel. We last learned in the other series. He fought for them. He protected them. He will fight for us. We go into battle. We go as one man. We we'll kill a thousand. Come back on scale. That's his confidence. That's protection. So we are not alone as Christians. Do you understand it? He is with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. He, <laughs> we are covered, we are covered, we are covered by God. And that's what Psalm 128, what this, everyone 128 all tells us about. Except the Lord, except the Lord, keep watch over a city. They watch in vain, those who watch. But he is our shield and buckler, as he told Abraham. He is the shield and buckler of you. He is the shield and buckler of the church of Jesus Christ. And those who hate Jesus. They hate us as Christians, and they hate us as a church, and they can do nothing. 
you can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth, we thank God for that. We'll continue the next time. But meanwhile, I say, may the peace of God, the shallow of God be with you and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us even now and forever. As we brought this to you from the Jesus Harvard Ministries, this international headquarters, Holy Ghost, Kachija. See you the next time.